In this video, we're going to take a deep dive look at constructors. So what is a constructor? A constructor is something that creates an object from a class. And we've seen quite a bit about classes and objects before. So this is what actually makes the object, or as we'll say, instantiates an object. A constructor typically has the same name as the class itself. It looks a lot like a method. But there is one thing that's different from a method, and that is a constructor does not have a return type because it's a given that it is creating and returning an object. Also, it's usually public, but doesn't have to be public. So we're going to take a look at a constructor, and then we're also going to consider overloading. Overloading is when you have a method or a constructor, actually multiple methods or constructors, with the same name, but a different parameter list. So a parameter is something you can pass to a method or a constructor. We've seen this in our getter, I'm sorry, in our setter methods and also in the go method, which we'll see in just a moment. So you can pass parameters to constructors just as well as you can pass parameters to methods. Let's take a look at our program. So if I navigate over to our vehicles program, we'll see line number 28, vehicle my vehicle equals new vehicle. This is calling a constructor. Now, if I control click, we see that it goes to the vehicle class, but nowhere in particular. And that's because Java gives you a default constructor if you don't define one. So in other words, Java automatically, when it compiles, will give you this public vehicle, just like so. OK, and save. Now watch. I'm going to go back to driver. I'm going to click on vehicle and look at where it goes. It goes right to the constructor that I have defined. I can define it or I can remove it. Doesn't matter. Either way, it's still going to exist because it will be added at compile time. Now, this works great for what we're doing right now because we're not doing any initialization. A constructor should purely be used to initialize a newly created object. If you find that you have a constructor that's very long or is making a lot of method calls, then you're probably not using a constructor the correct way. Now, if I go ahead and run my program as it is, I just want to do a quick demonstration and show that it continues to work as it always has, even with this new constructor that I've made. So gallons of gas, we'll say 10. Miles per gallon, we'll say 20. Odometer, 10,000. OK, distance to travel, 100. And you see that we get some output down here. Uh, we go gallons of gas, 10, uh, 10,000 on the odometer. We want to run 100 miles at 20 miles per gallon. That leaves us with 5 gallons of gas and 10,100 on the odometer. So let's go back and take a look at our uh, driver. And we see that I'm creating a vehicle called my vehicle. Now, here's an important concept. If I drive my vehicle, does your odometer change? And the answer is no. They're two separate objects. So how about I now make your vehicle? But you know what? If I take a look at the prompt user method, I see all these J option panes where I've done some prompting. At the moment, I don't want to. Um, at the moment, I don't want to have to replicate all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say. Uh, actually, we'll go down towards the bottom. Just a moment. Okay, I'm going to go down towards the bottom where we're actually running our vehicle, and I'm going to say, vehicle, your vehicle. Now, what have I done? I've declared a variable called your vehicle of type vehicle. Now I'm going to say equals new vehicle. OK, just like so, which is calling a constructor. But I'm going to make a subtle difference here. Instead of leaving it just at your vehicle, I'm going to go ahead and pass in some hard coded values for gallons of gas, miles per gallon, and odometer. So for your vehicle, let's say 10 uh, gallons of gas let's say 25 miles per gallon, and let's say 25,000 on the odometer. How about that? Well, you know what? Let's make it consistent. Let's do 25 all across. Now, you see what happens here is I get a red line. Let me add a comment before I forget. Create a new object, your vehicle. OK, I get a red line. And what does the red line say? Constructor vehicle and class vehicle cannot be applied to given types, required no arguments, found int int int. OK, now that's interesting. What it's telling us is that we're trying to call a constructor vehicle. 
and we're trying to pass in three values, but the constructor that exists for vehicle does not take any values. So let's overload this. Let's make a new constructor with the same name, but the only way we can do that is if we accept uh, a different parameter list, and the parameter list is what comes between the uh, parentheses. So you see, as I have it right now, it's illegal. It won't work. It will say constructor is already defined. We can't have two identical constructors. We can have the same name, but we have to have a different parameter list. So let's see. I think it was a, a double for gallons of gas. And actually, let me, we already have a variable called gallons of gas. Just to make it clear, let me call that in gallons of gas, which, by the way, typically we would not do that, but that's a, that's a different story. So <clears throat> gallons of gas, and then I think we have, what do we have, miles per gallon and odometer? Yeah. So we'll say uh, int miles in miles per gallon, and finally int in odometer. Okay, now what do we do? Now you see we compile now because you see we have overloaded this constructor and we've given it a different parameter list. Now, what do we do with these parameters? Well, we have to save them. Okay, I'm gonna do one second here. Okay, um, I'm gonna, <clears throat> there is one shortcut I can take. If I have this variable here and it's the same name as this attribute here, there are two different places in memory. They just happen to have the same name. If I have that, I can alt enter and I can say assign to existing field gallons of gas and look at what it does for me down here. Okay. The only trick is that's a little bit confusing if you're not used to the syntax because we have gallons of gas on both sides of the equal sign and we have the keyword this. This just means whatever the current object is. In this case, it's your vehicle. Um, okay, I don't think it's going to be smart enough. No, it's not going to be smart enough to make that uh, for the next few parameters unless I rename them. But I'm going to leave them as they are just to make it a bit easier to visualize what's going on. Look at this. Miles per gallon equals N miles per gallon. That's effectively doing the same thing on line 24 as we're doing on line 23. Just a different syntax. But again, if you're a bit newer to programming, this makes a bit more sense because you can see these two variables are one and the same. And you can see that these two variables are one and the same as well. So we're taking the value from this variable and we're putting it into this attribute. Let's do it one more time with odometer. Odometer equals n odometer. Okay, there we go. And save. Okay, now back to driver. And I'm going to make a little, uh, a little change here. I'm going to say uh, system out print line. I'll tell you what, let's move this down a little bit. Okay, control X, we'll make a brand new area down here. Okay, uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take your vehicle and I'm gonna move it the same distance we moved my vehicle. So I'm gonna say system out print line, your vehicle. Okay, and then we'll say plus your vehicle. Okay, like so. Uh, I did a, a, sp a control space there to autocomplete. Then we'll say your vehicle dot go, and we'll give it a distance of, uh, what do we say, int distance? Whoops, yeah, that's fine. And then let's print your vehicle again. System out print line, your vehicle after move. Okay. And your, uh, whoops, your vehicle. Okay. Uh, I'm going to also add just a little label to the my vehicle part. Okay, so that we know which is which. My vehicle. Okay. And then we'll say my vehicle after move. Okay, let's run it one time without the debugger just to watch it run. And then we'll run it one more time with the debugger so that we can look specifically it's what, it, what is happening with each of these constructor calls. So I go ahead and play. Enter gallons of gas. This is for my vehicle. We'll say 10, 10 miles per gallon, uh, and 10,000 on the odometer. Distance to travel 100. Now watch the output down below is we see that my vehicle is going to run and your vehicle is going to run. 
But what's important is that it's going to respect that we have two different odometers. And we'll see that the odometer, uh, well, let's just, let's just watch and see. So you notice that my odometer is the starting odometer plus 100 miles. Your odometer is the starting odometer plus 100 miles. If I were to print out my vehicle again, and let's go ahead and do that, we'll see that its state has not changed. And in the land of programming, state means the value of internal uh, attributes. So gallons of gas for my vehicle again, 10, 10, 10,000, distance to travel, 100. Okay, so we see that we run my vehicle. We see that the, we've run out of gas because we ran 100 miles at 10, gallon, uh, 10 miles per gallon. We started with 10 gallons of gas, so we're effectively out of gas. We end that trip with 10,100 on the odometer. Now for your vehicle, we see that your vehicle is a bit more efficient. I think I put that at 25 miles per gallon. So 100 miles only results in a difference of four gallons of gas. And also your odometer has increased by 100. But take a look. When we print out my vehicle one more time, my vehicle still has its same internal state that it had before running your vehicle. And that's why object-oriented programming is so important. We can have multiple objects. Each object will have its own state. So let's go ahead and debug now, and let's watch what happens. We'll say uh, debug project. Let's watch what happens. Okay, note that the kind of Pepto-Bismol color line has changed mint green. Now let's remember what our uh, let's remember what our debug uh, keys are. So step into is F7. Step over is F8. Step into means if I'm on a method call or a constructor call. Let's see what is inside that method or constructor. So note that I'm in driver. Watch very carefully. Watch the tab and watch where I go when I choose F7. F7 takes me right to the default constructor for vehicle and back again. And now F8, and I'll go ahead and tell it just, just play on until the next breakpoint, which is what? Uh, probably can, uh, F5. So I'll go ahead and choose F5. And enter gallons of gas. We've seen this before, so I'll go through it relatively quickly. Uh, odometer, 10,000. Distance to travel, 100. So it goes there. And let's see. Um, okay, I think I, I think I told it to go a little too far. Let me try that one more time. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna look at our second breakpoint now. So I'll go ahead and say finish debugger session, and let's debug one more time. Okay. So this time we're only paying attention to that second breakpoint. So we're going to let it play until it gets to our second breakpoint, which is line number 66. And notice this is on the vehicle constructor. Uh, the vehicle constructor specifically for the your vehicle object. Now watch very closely as I choose F7. Note the difference between this debugging session and the last one. In the last one, we came to the default constructor. In this session, we're now coming to this overloaded constructor. Now, uh, let's take a look at uh, just a moment. Uh, I want to look at variables. There we go. Let's take a look at variables. So let's look at the this object, which again, that represents the current object. The current object is vehicle. More specifically, your vehicle. Just remember where we are. It's your vehicle. Okay. Uh, before initialized, all of these attributes, odometer, gallons of gas, and miles per gallon. Odometer, miles per gas, and uh, miles per gallon. Uh, sorry, odometer, gallons of gas, miles per gallon. Each of those, as we normally will see in Java, each of those will start at zero. Any number type, an int, double, float, short, whatever will be initialized to zero unless we give it another value. So you see, as I mouse over here, we see the value zero. As I look down in the variables tab, we also see the value zero. But let's watch what happens as I choose F8. So F8, watch that gallons of gas down here. It's currently 0, 0.0. And what's the value that's coming in? 25.0. Okay, I choose F8. Notice that it updates to 25.0 here and 25.0 here. F8 again is going to initialize the miles per gallon. Miles per gallon is coming in at 25. The attribute is zero. 
On line number 24, we're assigning the parameter value to the attribute value. So watch this attribute miles per gallon. It's currently zero. Watch what's going to happen when I choose F8. F8 sets it to 25, which is that second parameter. Once again, 25, 25 again. That leaves one more, this 25,000. And what do we do with that? Well, that should be pretty clear. 25,000 is this in odometer parameter, which on line 25, we're assigning to the odometer attribute, this guy right here. Okay, uh, so I go ahead and I choose F8. Okay, and you see, sure enough, odometer is now 25,000. And as I mouse over each of these again, we see 25,000, 25, and 25.0. Debugger, love it. Uh, it's worth repeating again. If you want to save time while learning Java, your best friend is to learn the debugger. So I will go ahead. I'm going to click back to output now. And what you can see in the output tab is as I'm choosing F8, it is executing a line each time I print F8, uh, each time I press F8. In other words, right now, the mint green line is on line 72. So when I press F8, you should see your vehicle after move is going to appear down here in the output. F8, there we go, your vehicle after move. Now you see the mint green line is on 74, and then it's going to print my vehicle after move, F8, and my vehicle after move, and now the program is essentially done. So constructors uh, creates an object. It should be very minimal. We don't want to, I, I've seen people write programs where they put everything in the constructor. Don't do that. Only put things in the constructor that are required to instantiate an object. So same name as the class itself, no return type, usually public, there are exceptions. And then overloading, this is a question you will definitely get in a technical interview at some point if this is something you want to make a career out of. And the question is, what's the difference between overloading and overwriting? We haven't discussed overwriting yet. We will later this semester. But overloading is when we have a constructor or a method, multiple, I'm sorry, uh, multiple constructors or methods with the same name in a different parameter list. And remember that the parameter list is this thing that's in between parentheses. Okay, so we're looking specifically at the types here compared to this, but also the call to this constructor has to match in parameters, just like a phone number. This could be 513 something something, okay? Uh, while this constructor up here, this constructor call is using a different number. It's using no number whatsoever. But nonetheless, what we pass into a constructor or a method call, what we pass in between these parentheses, there has to be a matching constructor or method signature that is ready to accept those values in that order. So that's constructors. In our next video, we're going to take a look at something called statics, which is where we can change something, and it has an effect on every single object of that class. I look forward to seeing you then.